Imagine waking up tomorrow. I take it back. It's no longer tomorrow. It's today. In fact, it's actually yesterday to find out that your dream of home ownership, the cornerstone of the American dream, is under siege. Not by the market fluctuations, not by your own financial missteps, but by a calculated move from the very guardians of home financing. This is a stark reality that could affect millions. Hold on to your seats, boys and girls, as I break down this tale of corporate maneuvers and potential mass foreclosures that could reshape the landscape of American home ownership. I'm going to expose how your home could be at risk and why now more than ever, it's crucial to be vigilant and making certain that you're making your mortgage payments on time. A storm has been brewing, one that could rain down on unexpected American homeowners with devastating effect. At the heart of the storm is Fannie Mae, a titan in the mortgage financing industry, embroiled in a strategy to offload thousands of what are called non-performing mortgages or re-performing mortgages to the highest bidder. Take a wild guess at who is the highest bidder. Thanks for checking out my channel. I hope you learned a thing or two today. Please consider subscribing while you're here and like, share, and follow along. A little education before we move on. A non-performing loan is a loan in which the borrower is in default and hasn't made any scheduled payments of principal or interest for a certain period of time. Usually it's about 90 days. Re-performing loans are loans that have been delinquent but have re-performed for a period of time. Many of these re-performing mortgages are ones that were delinquent and went into forbearance and they either modified their current loan by rolling in the late payments and the arrearages or by taking out a second mortgage to wrap up the delinquent mortgages and arrearages and then just attach it to the end of the mortgage. But why would they do this? Why would they offload these mortgages? You know, if, if I'm actually managing the situation, which of course I'm not, and I think we've learned from the past that you don't necessarily want to have bad mortgages on your balance sheet. If you can get a reasonable price for them, it would make sense. Or is it to dodge the bullet of being accountable for a foreclosure wave that could tarnish its image and destabilize the market? But there's a twist. Fannie Mae is under conservatorship, meaning any fallout is not just their cross to bear, but a burden on every U.S. taxpayer. That's right. The potential foreclosures and financial turmoil could be funded by your hard-earned dollars. So it's probably the right call to dump these loans, uh, you know, so that that way the taxpayers are not on the hook for this. Is it any coincidence that Fannie Mae's stock is currently up 175% year over year? The stock price surges when the loans are offloaded. I'm not an expert in equities, but there seems to be some correlation. So ultimately, it seems like a great move to offload these bad mortgages onto a private company, letting them handle the, and deal with the foreclosure process itself. Seems like a smart move. Fannie Mae's making a smart move in protecting the U.S. taxpayer. Let's rewind to 2008, the year the financial world stood at the brink of collapse. Fannie Mae, along with Freddie Mac, was taken under the wing of FH. FA to prevent a total meltdown, aka they were bailed out and by, you guessed it, the U.S. taxpayer. Fast forward to the Trump era, plans were set in motion to free Fannie and Freddie from conservatorship, a move stalled by a whirlwind of political and economic uncertainties, and of course, enter COVID. Spike in unemployment, the country, the world rather, at a standstill, and in an effort to combat delinquencies, forbearances emerged as a beacon of hope for many homeowners, offering them a lifeline to catch up on any sort of payments. Many that actually needed it took advantage of it, and many took advantage of the situation just because they could. Non-performing or re-performing mortgages lurking in their portfolios have the highest probability of going into foreclosure first. The borrowers holding their mortgage have shown they have a characteristic that is more likely to go into foreclosure, especially if times get tight. They're willing to not make their payments. They're willing to sacrifice their credit. They will most likely be the ones that get foreclosed on first. As we navigate through the soft landing or any other sort of economic downturn, the fear is that the same loans could be the first to snap, plunging many back into foreclosure. Foreclosure rates are inching back to pre-pandemic levels. The trend is up. Signs of potentially troubled times are ahead. But who benefits from this distress? Enter the hedge funds and private equity firms, the new predators on the block, snapping up non-performing loans at a fraction of the value, all sanctioned by 
the U.S. government. I've said it many times before, take a bill that has been proposed, whether it's become law or not, and just reverse the name of it, and you'll easily be able to determine the results of the bill. Anti-inflationary bill, we got inflation. End hedge fund control of American Homes Act, guess what? Hedge funds control American housing provided by our U.S. government. You guessed it. Fannie Mae is currently dumping these loans into the hands of hedge funds and private equity. You go to their website and you can see the requirements to be one of the bidders of these pools of the mortgages that start in the hundreds of millions of dollars. If you have the capital to play in the sandbox, they will welcome you with open arms. The strategy is clear and cold-blooded. Firms like PIMCO and Predium aren't just investing to add to their fixed income portfolio. They're positioning to become new landlords of America, turning new owner-occupied homes into rental properties at an unprecedented scale. These deals are sweet for them, buying mortgages at a discount, eyeing properties with substantial equity, and with little incentive to negotiate with the homeowner to, or to keep them in the house whatsoever. The message is stark. They're not here to help you keep your home. They're here to claim it. They are buying mortgages sitting at less than 40% loan to value. That means a $200,000 mortgage that they just purchased is collateralized by a $500,000 home and they're buying these pools at a half billion dollars at a time. They are positioning themselves to take home ownership of your home. I don't mean to be an alarmist, but to me, the message and move is clear crystal clear. In 2008, there was no desire to hold on to these properties because there was no value. Now, even if we get a massive wave of foreclosures and the market tanks 40%, they're still sitting in a positive equity position with, again, no need or incentive to work with you, the homeowner. They're not going to keep you in their house. They're simply going to evict you and then turn around and rent it right back to you. As we stand here on the precipice of what could be a massive surge in foreclosures, the shadow of private equity looms large, ready to sweep up properties and consolidate their hold over the real estate market in the US. The implications are dire, not just for the homeowners, but for the very fabric of communities across the nation. Typically what happens is these companies buy up mortgages or rental homes concentrated in areas that decimate the community. Predium, one of the bidders and winners of these pools, has already made a deal with DR Horton for 7,500 purpose-built rental homes. They're not just going to build 150 homes spread across all 50 states, no. They're going to build where they can get the biggest bang for their buck. So they end up being in a handful of areas with a concentrated amount of private equity owners. Why do you think they are moving in on these pools of mortgages? Their entire existence is to own real estate. This is a quicker way for them to increase their position without having to wait for homes to be built. This is not a drill. The signs are all there. The pieces of the puzzle are falling into place. The question is not if, but when the hammer will fall. It's a call to arms for every American homeowner and potential buyer to stay informed, to question, and to prepare. And God forbid, do not miss your mortgage payment. The real estate market, once the bedrock of personal investment, is on the cusp of transformation that could see private equity firms becoming the gatekeepers of the American dream. As I continue to peel back the layers of this unfolding narrative, one thing becomes clear. The future of homeownership in America is at a crossroad. With private equity firms poised to redefine the landscape, the dream of owning a home could become an elusive privilege rather than a universal right. How we respond as individuals and as a society will determine the path forward. This is more than just a story of finance and foreclosures. It's a tale of resilience and resistance. But understanding the forces at play, we can navigate this treacherous terrain together. Stay with me. Stay informed. Please do me a favor and subscribe and follow along as we try to challenge the status quo and ensure that the American dream of homeownership remains within reach. Your home, your right, your fight. Let's embark on this journey together. My name is Darren Hunter. This was another guaranteed message. Have a great day.